Welcome to Guns and Gear Network everyone, appreciate you tuning in. Today we're going to look at an alternative to waxed slugs. Stay tuned. Welcome back guys, appreciate you tuning in. So if you follow my channel, you know I recently did a video on waxed slugs. I'm going to show you an alternative that you can do that um, is pretty simple. Uh, you just use some Elmer's glue. This is wood glue, uh, school glue, anything. I like the carpenter's glue. I think it's a little more um, tougher than like a school glue, but school glue would work in a pinch if that's all you had available. It's cheap enough to buy a couple bucks for a bottle and that's uh, a way to make these. I've already started these to kind of speed up the process on camera. I will refer to a link uh, below for the wax slug video also uh, the uh, link is will be for the Amazon store to show you this uh, um, crimper that I'm using here and it's going to be in the store also and so forth so if you follow the videos uh, for the wax slugs you know you got to build you one of these it's a guide to be able to cut the ends off I started using this I was using this in the other video but I found this in one of my tool drawers and I think it works a little bit better and I'm simply going to just use this as a guide to trim that off I'll show you I've already started making these like I said to kind of speed up the video I'm going to show you how this is going to work and with this method you're going to have to wait probably 24 hours um, before you can actually cap and crimp these be careful not to spill your shot. Uh, what I'm going to do is, again, I use these little individual cups, just like that. This one I've already used. Because it's got residual glue in it, I'm going to just toss it to the side and start fresh. Um, I heat my glue in the microwave just for, you know, 15 seconds, something like that, to make it a little more workable. In the summertime, if it's out in your garage, you probably won't have to worry about it, but it's pretty cool temperatures here today. And the glue has been out in my garage, so it was uh, pretty firm, kind of hard to work with. You want it kind of, uh, you know, a little more easy to work with. Well, let me finish up this. So take this back out. You're going to have to trim this if it doesn't come all the way off, which I'm fine with. I actually prefer it. It's easier to probably uh, manage so you don't spill your shot everywhere. Again, like the other video I showed, you're going to have to pull your wad up like this. Cut about a quarter of an inch off all the way around. Some people might like this method better, to be honest with you. Um, one thing I forgot to mention in that other video, I did put in the uh, pinned comments and in the section below, anytime you start altering factory ammunition, there's always a risk involved. One of the risks with wax slugs, and I, I kind of, I guess, alluded to that in the other video, that's why I, uh, I put a overshot card and a crimp mine. Some people just pour the thing in and let the wax firm up problem with that is, and I linked to a video of a guy that blew a shotgun up, what happens is this wax gets uh, soft, it gets hot, and then it, it starts, it can, it, I think what he was doing in that video, he was kind of putting his muzzle down, which is a safe thing, right? If you're not aiming at something, you want to put your muzzle down. Well, I think what happened was one of those wax slugs slid out because he didn't have it crimped. It slid out, slid down the barrel. The next round he shot and blew the whole barrel out. Um, so this method is a little bit safer in that regard. But anytime you also take precautions when you're, when you're reloading, whether you know starting from scratch, reloading ammo, or uh, altering factory ammo. But if it's done safely, it's, it's a very minimal risk. So you take your glue, pour it into your uh, cup here. I'm going to come out now. Again, this glue gets kind of, if it's, ain't, if it's not, um, you don't have to put a lot. I would probably put less than more. I just use these little stir sticks, kind of work it around, get all the glue coated on all the beads like that. See what I'm working with there? And again, doing these one at a time is easier to manage in my opinion. You want to make sure your wad is seated correctly before you start. And then just start scooping it in. Can you see that on the camera angle, son? No. Well, I'm right-handed, so it's real hard, but I'll do it this way. Can you see it now? 
Um, your hand's in the way a little bit. So my son's out here helping me, guys. So bear with us. We're trying to show you, but you're essentially just putting it into. I don't put it all in. Put some in. Same method I used with the uh, wax lug is tapping. That kind of settles everything in. Sit here and tap it like this. You can take one of these I built out of a, a dowel rod. Kind of push it in. And you may get some residual uh, stuff that comes out. Kind of scrape that off. Keep going with the rest of it. You're not going to get all of it in. You'll get close, but not all. Some people go through the extra effort of weighing their shells prior to filling them. In other words, what a factory shell weighs and then taking out um, this stuff uh, that they've made, whether it be wax slug or glue slugs, and making it the exact same weight payload as the original factory. I don't go through that effort, um, but some people do just so it's kind of balanced of what the uh, powder load is. You can do that if you like. But you kind of see what we got here. I've got just enough room for an overshot card with that and a uh, twisting this right, dowel rod like this kind of helps it keep from sticking as bad instead of just pl plunging down. But it's pretty sticky. That's what you kind of get. I've already done these, I don't know, about an hour ago. They're starting to set up. You're probably going to have to leave these overnight uh, to let that glue really set up nice. Because if you uh, put, a, especially if you put one of these plastic overshot cards and the um, crimper method, then you're going to have an issue with uh, the glue not getting air to be able to dry. But I'm going to let these set for 24 hours. I'll come back uh, at a later date and then we will finish up the video then. But I'm going to let these set overnight and then we'll come back uh, again. Thanks, guys. I'll be right back. All right, guys. So it's been 24 hours later and the glue is nice and set up and you can see that everything it's uh, stiff you can make sure you're mashing on it to see if the uh, glue is still wet in there um, before you do it it should it dries clear so it's kind of hard to tell if it's kind of still a milky color you uh, will have problems again using just wood glue Elmer's glue I would probably use a wood glue I think it's a little tougher and then again guiding it up to our crimper Start spinning it and start pushing up. And now you have a very nice professional crimp. Same thing. I just did five of these to the uh, in this session here. Start spinning it. Start pushing up. Same thing, we'll keep finishing up these. I notice this has gotten a little loose, so we'll tighten that. Put your shot card in, guide it up, start spinning it, and then start pushing up. So there you go guys, five glue slugs, I'm going to call them that instead of wax slugs, should work great. These right here will also break apart, uh, depends on what they hit. Now these will probably stay together a little better hitting softer tissue, but um, they should break apart um, very similar to any frangible round. But uh, anyway guys, just thought I'd show you another way to make some self-defense rounds out of some cheap birdshot and, uh, you know, have some options when you don't have a lot of choices as far as being able to just run to the store and pick up something uh, to purchase. But anyway guys, appreciate you tuning in. If you have any questions, post those below. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Bring another video shortly. Have a great day.